Hello everyone, my name is Louis Dumont and I, like many others, have been exploring Lightwave 2018, particularly when it comes to the PBR materials and render options, um, which are quite different to Lightwave 2015. I'm used to kind of setting things up with Fresnel calculations or incidence angles and stuff to get some stuff looking nice, but with the new principal PS, uh, BSDF shader, it's quite easy to, um, oh, hold on, <laughs> let me just switch back on some of the options here. It's quite easy to get something looking good really quite quick, quite quickly. Um, so this is just a video to go through some of the export options and some of the compositing options afterwards in my compositing program of choice at the moment, After Effects. So just to jump straight to it, I have a little scene here with uh, a mixture of different types of materials. Um, most of them are the principled BSDF shaders, but some of them are Delta, Conductor, that kind of stuff. Um, and what I've done is I've gone through the VPR buffer view here just to check um, the various uh, channels being used, and I've switched those on in the buffer options, as well as a few other things like depth, which I've set a range for, and object ID and surface ID. So with all those checked on output, we've got multi-layer EXR checked, and let's hit render. Okay, the render is done and I have booted up After Effects. But before I continue, I just want to um, draw attention to the kind of what, what spurred me on to create the video, I guess, was um, this video posted by Gar26LW. Um, and it goes to show some of the functions on how to set up Arnold for Maya, uh, a lot of which seem to be very similar for Lightwave 2018, uh, including uh, the compositing compositing the image buffers outside of Lightwave, uh, basically just switching them all to additive, uh, which I'm going to show you now. So let's load in our multi EXR and our depth as well. Uh, there's a depth in the multi EXR, but um, because I was playing around with volumetrics, uh, the volumetric primitive to create this sort of steam effect, uh, the depth kind of screwed up. Uh, the one that's built in here, so I did a little separate one hiding that volumetric effect. Um, okay, so the first thing to do is check that we are in 32-bit mode. Cool. And I am going to interpret this and hide or ignore the alpha. And there's our render. But let's start extracting some of the maps. So let's load up the extractor plugin. Click anywhere here and start bringing in what we know we have. So we have diffuse, direct and indirect, specular, direct and indirect, and that pretty much makes up our render. So let's load those in. I'm just gonna do this quickly now. Okay, now we have all of our, our main layers uh, in there. I'm just gonna select them all and, and change the blend mode to add. And then we have our render, but it is dark and saturated. So we need to do a bit of gamma correction. So I'm just adding an adjustment layer, Control Alt Y. And I'm gonna bring up the levels filter and just dial in 2.2. And we have our render again. Um, now what we can do as well is uh, I'll just add some of that volumetric effect back in. Okay, so we've got our steam appearing from the top. And let's also take advantage of a surface ID to change some colors around, should this be required. I oh, know before do, before we do that, let's just add depth in because it's nice to add a little bit of depth of field 
So I set my depth to um, zero to one meter, uh, zero to five meter range. So that will show if I do that. Um, but what I want to do is I want to kind of limit that a bit. So I'm going to make the black point. I'm going to invert it as well by putting the higher value in the black point. So let's see two and one point two. Okay, it's getting there. Cool, looks good. Let's pre-compose. Move all items into the pre-comp. Hide that. No, let's name this as gamma correction. And let's put a new adjustment layer underneath. Bring up our depth of field. Artifacts has a built-in one, but I'm using the um, Lenscare plugin, which is fantastic. Select our depth for our depth layer. Select a focus point and start bringing in some defocus. Okay, that should be fine. And I'm just going to up the border brightness as well, just to add some. Just, it looks just a little bit more imperfect, I guess. Um, Cool. Now let's change the color of, say, our mug area using a surface ID. So let's duplicate this bottom one and select surface ID. Now it doesn't automatically populate the RGB here, so we have to do that ourselves. Oops. Okay, let's switch that from add to not dissolve, but to nothing. And we're going to solo it as well, just so we can see what's going on. Uh, and now in our render, if we do another quick render here without any of the render options on. Just an F9 render. Um, in the buffers, we have our surface ID, and we can see here. We've got one, two, five, four, three, and so on. Um, and they correlate to the black point and white point here. So if we do two to three, we have our mug. Let's go three to two, just so we can invert that effect. Cool, now we can use that as a mat for the diffuse layer. So let's just do this mat cup. Let's duplicate our direct diffuse layer, so this layer. And let's loom a mat so we can just have that. And let's just muck around with the colors. So I'll just put mug and on solo. Put that to normal as well. Um, so it doesn't add on top of itself again. Um, and we can shift around the colors a bit. This is, for me, really, really handy because it's, there's been a number of occasions where it has been something as simple as shifting the colors around um, and not wanting to re-render stuff. Uh, this is been a really easy way to do it. Um, yeah. So the only thing I haven't really got to grips with, or one of the only things I haven't really got to grips with, is um, selecting and pulling out these mats uh, easily from the surface and object IDs. Uh, as we can see, they're, you know, nice easy numbers here. And for the most part, the, the IDs here are you know, quite nice and anti-aliased as well. So it's it's a really nice mat, but it seems to include everything above and below the white and black point. Uh, so if I put a levels on here, we can see, I change this back to zero and one. Levels, let's go up to 10. So we can see all the IDs here, but as you can see the, for example, the mug or the cup and the cup handle are two separate IDs. So I wouldn't, I'd like to be able to 
select, let's say, just the mug. Uh, but because the mug is two and the handle is one, everything below two is also blacked out. Um, so there must be a way to just basically clamp this area. It doesn't really have any effect here if I do clip output or anything. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to look into next. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's a quick look at exporting some of the buffers and how to use them in After Effects. Thanks very much for watching.